Hello, welcome to session 12 of Microeconomic Theory 1. Session 12, we are going to look at monopoly, the first part of monopoly market. The session analyzes monopoly market structure. Emphatically, it examines the sources of monopoly power, the monopoly demand and revenue functions, as well as the profit maximization condition of the monopolies. And also, we will try to discuss the supply curve for the monopolies. These are the sessions or the topics that we're going to discuss in this session. We will look at, we will provide you with an introduction to monopoly, demand and revenue functions. And in, this, in discussing demand and revenue function, we are going to relate it, uh, establish the relationship between demand, average revenue, and marginal revenue. And also, we will try to establish the relation between the price elasticity of demand and that of the marginal revenue of the monopolies. And also, look at the revenue curves and that of the demand elasticity. We will also try to analyze the profit maximization condition of the firm or of the monopolies. And also, try and derive the uh, supply curve for our monopolies. By the end of the session, you should be able to identify the characteristics and sources of monopoly power and also explain monop the down, uh, why the monopoly demand curve is downward sloping. And explain why, true, why do a monopoly's marginal cost is less than the price he or she sets a marginal cost that is equal to marginal revenue. And also, we will try to see, or you should be able to understand how to derive the monopoly supply curve. Or we will discuss and show, we will show you that the monopoly has no supply curve and you should understand why it's so. Again, the usual books are what we are using. Jeffrey uh, Perlow's book, Microeconomics, and also the book by Viren and that of Walter Nicholson. Now, first let's try and define what a monopoly is. A monopoly is a market structure in which the firm has absolute power to produce a commodity or produce and supply a commodity which there are no closed substitutes. So there is a single seller of the commodity and it is, the firm is a sole producer and seller of that commodity. Can you think of any firm that exists in Ghana that is a sole producer of a commodity? Yeah, you may be right if you talk about uh, the Ghana Electricity Company. That is uh, the electricity company of Ghana that is close to it, and it is a sole producer of electricity or supplier of electricity in Ghana. Even though there are other small suppliers of electricity in Ghana, but then uh, let ECG comes closer to being a monopolist. Now, if the firm is producing a commodity that has no closed substitute, then we expect that the cross price elasticity of demand is going to be equal to zero. And since the firm is a sole producer of the commodity, that will also mean that the firm supply curve, curve or supply happens to be the market supply. And the demand that faces the firm is the same as the market demand. Even though you are the sole producer of the commodity, the consumer purchases other commodities. So if the uh, monopolist increases the price above a certain level, then the consumer will not purchase the commodity at all and will spend his or her income on other commodities. So in other words, the monopolist our commodity is competing for the consumer's income with other commodities. Then also there is the issue of potential competition. If, even though you may be the sole producer of the commodity, but if other firms realize that there is a high profit enjoyed, being enjoyed by this firm, then it will, uh, other firms will be attracted to enter the market and reap away that super normal profit. So monopolist is very careful when charging a higher price. So what are the sources of monopoly power? First, we can talk about legal barriers. 
uh, we can have laws that will restrict or will give the firm uh, the right to be the sole producer of the commodity. And this is as a result of government trying to protect uh, the interests of consumers. Government believes that if it should open the market up, uh, it can lead to inefficiencies in the market. So government and arts and law, and that prohibits other firms from producing the commodity and makes this single firm the sole producer of the commodity. And this is what we call franchise monopoly. There is also the patent monopoly. As a result of discovering the commodity, you are given the right to be the sole producer of the commodity over a period of time. Then also there are technological barriers. You may be the sole, pro you may be the sole uh, owner of the technology that is used in the production of the commodity and that gives you the right to produce a commodity or be the sole producer of the commodity. Because there was no other firm in the market who has a, who has a technology that will enable you to produce a commodity. Then also the can, monopoly can, result, uh, can uh, result from efficiency. A firm may be very efficient and as a result will be able to produce at the lowest possible cost and will end up driving, driving other competitors out of the market. Now let's try to see derive the demand for our monopolies. Remember we said that the demand for the monopolies is the same as a market demand. So if we derive the demand for the firm, we have to also derive the demand for the market. Our demand curve, the monopoly demand curve is downward sloping on like a perfectly competitive market demand. The demand here is downward sloping, which means that for every additional unit of the commodity that the producer wants to sell, the producer must be willing to reduce the price. It also implies that the monopolist has control over the price. Or when the monopolist has control over the price, consumers will determine the amount of the commodity that they are going to purchase. And if the monopolist determine the, price, the amount that it will supply onto the market, monopolies, consumers will then also de determine the price that they will be willing to pay for that amount of the commodity. Now let's start with a function. If uh, we have uh, the inverse demand function to be P equals to A minus Q. What we are trying to do is establish a relationship between the demand for the firm and also the marginal revenue of the firm, how these two are related. Now, for us to get, we know our inverse demand function. For us to get our total revenue, it is price times quantity. If the price is given as A minus B multiplied by Q, then our total revenue is going to be equal to PQ. And that will mean that our equation is going to be a, uh, total revenue function is going to be A minus B, Q, or into brackets, multiplied by Q. And that will mean that our total revenue is A, Q, minus B, Q squared. Our uh, average revenue is going to be equal to uh, total revenue divided by Q, or output. And that will mean that our average revenue is A minus B, Q which is the same as the demand, inverse demand function. So in, under monopoly, the average revenue function is the same as the demand function. Now, let's try and see the relationship that exists between the marginal revenue and that of the demand. We know that for us to get marginal revenue, it is the differentiation of total revenue with respect to that of output. And since we know our total revenue function to be A multiplied by Q minus B Q square, then our average, when we take the total, uh, we take the derivation, first of that derivation with respect to quantity, then that is going to give us A minus 2B Q. The slope of the demand function is given by, is given as minus B. And the slope of the marginal revenue function is given to us as um, minus 2B meaning that the slope of our marginal revenue function is twice that of the demand function. And that will mean that the, demand, the marginal revenue function or curve is going to lie below that of the demand function. The demand curve, the marginal revenue curve, will be steeper relative to that of the demand curve. If we plot that this is, this is 
the demand curve figure one shows us the demand curve and that of the marginal revenue curve and we notice that the slope of the marginal revenue is twice that of the demand curve that would mean that the origin from the origin to the point where the marginal revenue curve cuts the uh, horizontal axis is the same as the distance from where the marginal revenue cuts the horizontal axis to where the demand curve also cuts the horizontal axis for the monopolies to increase its output by uh, the q the the monopoly the monopoly lowers its price per unit by the slope of the demand curve which is the p the q and our marginal revenue is equal to the price plus the p the q multiplied by q and that is the relationship between marginal revenue and our price which means that if the firm is to be in equilibrium, remember for the firm to be in equilibrium, price, marginal revenue must be equal to marginal cost. And if you are saying that uh, marginal revenue is equal to price plus the P, the Q, multiplied by Q, then it means that we are going to have a situation whereby our price is definitely going to be greater than our marginal cost. And we will see that soon. With this function, marginal revenue equals to price plus the, Q, the P, the Q, multiplied by Q, we can manipulate it and we will be able to establish a relationship that will exist between marginal revenue and the price elasticity of demand. And when we manipulate that, we will realize that the marginal revenue is equal to price into bracket 1 plus 1 over the price elasticity of demand. And we can translate that onto this diagram, and we will show that at the point of interception of the, on the vertical axis, where the demand curve cuts the vertical axis, uh, the price elasticity of demand is perfectly elastic or is equal to infinity. Then at the midpoint, price elasticity of demand is equal to 1, that is unitary elastic, and at the horizontal axis, where the demand curve cuts, the horizontal axis, price elasticity is equal to zero. Now, at the midpoint of the demand curve, we are saying that the price elasticity is equal to one or there is unitary elastic. And at that midpoint, our marginal revenue is equal to what? Zero. So marginal, marginal revenue is closer to the price as demand becomes more hot, elastic. Where the demand curve hits the vertical axis, uh, our quantity is equal to zero, and the demand curve is perfectly elastic, so marginal revenue equals to the price. Okay. Now, we can also relate this rev total rev demand curve marginal revenue to our total revenue curve. Where marginal revenue is equal to zero, the total revenue is at its maximum point, and the price elasticity is equal to one. When, margin, when last C is greater than 1, total revenue is increasing. And when last C is less than 1, total revenue is declining. And in this case, since when last C is greater than 1, total revenue is increasing, what it implies is our monopolies will never want to produce in the region where the price last of demand is less than 1. In other words, our monopolies will always produce in the region of the demand curve where the price elasticity is greater than one, and that is the rising portion of the total revenue curve. Now, just as we saw under a uh, perfect competitive market, for us to maximize our profit, the firm will also uh, again equate the marginal cost to the marginal revenue. And the firm will charge a price that is greater than our marginal cost unlike the perfectly competitive firm this is because we have a situation whereby the marginal revenue lies below the demand curve so under perfectly competitive market under under sorry under monopolistic market we have a situation where the price that the firm charges is greater than the marginal cost then the supply curve of the firm 
The firm has no, the, the, the monopolies has no unique relationship between output it supplies onto the market and the price that it charges. So, in short, the monopolies has no supply care. Again, at the end of this session, we have some questions that you should try your hands at them. Okay. We have questions such as discuss how the monopoly, how the monopoly market structure differs from that of the perfect competitive market structure. And also, why the monopoly's demand curve is downward sloping. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next session.